Next thing we want to share with you, other scriptures I can share with you concerning, you know, why you should read your Bible daily and get into a daily devotion time. Set some time apart to do this. Second thing I'm going to share with you, you need to invest in your spirit man. Once again, invest in your spirit man. Now, got to understand, first of all, man is a triune being. He is, first of all, spirit. He has a soul and he lives in the physical body. Once again, he's a spirit, he has a soul, he lives in a physical body. See, God is a spirit, and man is made in the image and after the likeness of Almighty God. So therefore, if God is a spirit, man is a spirit. The Bible says, Paul talking about to the church at Thessalonica, he said, and I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless into the coming of the Lord. So therefore, we can see that man, first of all, is a spirit. So I'm telling you, you learn, need to learn to invest in your spirit man. The Bible says that the spirit of the man is a candle of the Lord. That's what God is going to lead us by. When God speaks to us, he's speaking to our spirit. He's not speaking to our flesh. He's not speaking into our soulish realm. He's speaking to our spirit because God is a spirit and he communicates spirit to spirit. So therefore, what I'm saying, invest in your spirit man. We invest all types of money in our natural man. We go to the fitness center. We go to the gym. You know, we go to the track and we do all kinds of things as far as I'm concerned to build our spiritual muscles, as far, uh, natural muscles rather, and to put our physical body in shape. Well, we go to school and institutions of higher learning so that we can put our intellectual mind or our soul in shape. Well, and we spend very little time feeding our spirit man. We go to church one time a week, hear a 30 minute sermonette, and we figure, my God, I must be a spiritual dynamo. No, it don't work that way. It don't work that way. First of all, you need to buy books, teaching cassettes, videotapes, or whatever it is that you need to buy, paraphernalia, to help you grow and develop spiritually. Now, once again, go, go to a Christian bookstore and invest in your spirit man by buying books, teaching tapes, or spiritual um, cassettes and things like that, videotapes to help you grow and develop spiritually. Now, the Bible says in Acts chapter... 20, I'll share that with you. Hallelujah to God forevermore. I'm so excited about this teaching today. I hope you're getting something out of it. I pray that you are. And, and Luke, um, uh, not Luke, Luke is the one who wrote Acts, but L Acts chapter 20, the Bible says in verse number 32, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. Notice the word of God will build you up. It will strengthen your spirit, man. It will build you up. So therefore, like you build muscles by working out with the Nautilus machines and the weights and everything like that. Well, when you get the word of God in you, when you hear the word of God and you begin to practice and put these things into exercise, amen, I'm telling you, it will cause your spiritual muscles to grow. And so therefore, you will build a strong inner man. You will build a strong spirit man. And that's what we have. That's what we have need of today in churches. We need people with a strong inner man because the Word of God will cause you to grow. It will cause you to develop and mature in the things of the Spirit of God. Now, my time is running out, so I'm going to have to share this, go on and move on to some other things. Third thing we're going to talk to you about, you need to develop a consistent prayer life. Notice, develop a consistent prayer life. Fellowship is the foundation for relationship. And you're not married to anybody that you've never had fellowship with. In fact, if you've never met the person that you're about to marry and fellowship with them, I guarantee you it's not going to work. I don't care how much you say, well, God prophesied and said this, that, and this. Listen, fellowship without, relationship rather, without fellowship will not work. That's one of the problems with marriages today. People have relationship, their husband and wife, they're related to one another, but they don't fellowship. They don't talk to one another. So how do you expect to keep a marriage together when y'all don't even communicate? So therefore, how do you expect you and God to stay in relationship one with another when you don't even talk to him? He talks to you all the time. He's steadily trying to get you to do things. He's trying to get you to, to listen to him. He's trying to get you to read the word. He's trying to get you to spend time with him in prayer. He's trying to get you to fast at times, turn down your plate. He's trying to get you to turn that television off and stop watching CNN, NBC, and all the rest of that mess that you're watching on TV, soap operas and, and you know, uh, talk shows and all that mess, that garbage that just making a filthy, making your spirit man filthy. So stop putting the trash in. So therefore God's speaking to you all the time. He's saying, come and spend some time with me. So therefore we need to develop a consistent prayer life. Now, as I said before, fellowship is the foundation for relationship. Now, in Luke chapter 18, <clears throat> Jesus said, <clears throat> in verse number one, now notice what he said. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. In other words, not give up or lose heart 
or grow weary. He said men ought always to pray. So therefore, we need to pray. And the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, when he talks about the full armor of God, he's talking about how we ought to take on the whole armor of God. Many times we are dressed, amen, in the armor of God. We got our spiritual weapons on, amen, our spiritual uniform on. But there's something that's an important ingredient in, in Ephesians 6 and 18. The Bible says, praying always with all prayer or all types or all manner of prayer and supplication in the spirit. Notice what he says, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So therefore, the Bible is encouraging us to do what? To spend time praying, fellowshipping with the Father. Now, we can take you uh, uh, to other scriptures, but one of the scriptures I want to share with you, the Bible says in Psalm 63, verse number 1, and this is going to really bless you. Psalm 63, verse number 1. Oh, my God, I thank you for this teaching today. Oh, God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee, for my soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So therefore, I'm encouraging you to develop that hunger and that desire for God. Notice he said, early will I rise and seek you. Why? Because I want to spend time in fellowship with you. So therefore, when you are in need or have a want or a desire, folks, ask God first. First of all, go to God. The Bible lets us know that God hears our prayers and his ears are attentive to what we're asking him for, what we're petitioning God for. And then the last thing I'm gonna share with you is you need to join a local church, a local spirit-filled church where the word of God is not only being preached and taught, but the word of God is being lived and exemplified through the life of the leaders and the people in the local church. Mm -hmm.